just working on making sure everything is set up. And then we'll back the camera away a bit and we'll start doing our hand carding. Or maybe I'll just back away from the camera. Let's see if we can do that. No, angle down. That's better, a little bit more. So if you look in the chat, what you can see is I put the link, if this is a fiber that you want this exact fiber, you can just click on the link and that'll take you directly to this fiber for the month of March. And you're probably looking at it and you're saying, this Stephanie, this is a leap day, this is February 29th, this is not March yet. However, I'm just excited, we're gonna leap ahead to March. So that's what we're doing and we have our fiber with us. Hi Diana, how's it going? I'm glad you're here. Grab some fiber, come along. Do some hand carding with me, all that good stuff, or spinning or crocheting, knitting, whatever your work in progress is, or create another new work in progress, either way. So it's just a time today to sit, use our hand carders, grab our fiber, card up this fiber. It's our March Spinner's Surprise Fiber. So thank you again for joining me. Let's get into it with our fiber, and then we can chit chat and all that good stuff, which of course I have lots to say as usual. A lot about time. I've been thinking a lot about time and this concept of time and this, um, in some ways, this prison we all live in called time. And uh, it does apply to fiber arts. And I'll explain that in my thought process on it, on it in a minute. Ooh, knitting bunny. That's awesome. Absolutely awesome. If you guys are working on projects, definitely drop it in the comments. I'm interested to see what you're working on. So this fiber that I have is a lovely, lovely purple fiber. And it is something that I was very excited to order, very excited to get. It is uh, dyed by Diana at Angora Crafted. And so I don't know if she has any of this fiber left. I'm sure you could go to Angora Crafted and message her and see if she does. But that's where this piece of the fiber is. So if you're looking at this fiber and you don't want the rest of the fiber in the Spinner Surprise Box and you just want this, that's how you get this fiber. So, plus she just put out a, a post about um, dyeing yarns, dyeing fibers naturally. That's a very good read um, on her blog. So I definitely have to say just a bit of a fan of hers. So we have our hand carters, of course. We have only two ounces with us of the fiber. So we have the dyed, uh, the dyed wool, but then we have this other variety and you're gonna see oranges, a little bit of kind of maybe some marigolds, a little bit of some, a little bit of a bronzy, almost red and purples, a little bit of whites. Then we have, of course, the soft angora. So this is just two ounces of it. I just grabbed two random ounces we're gonna cart it up however we want. We don't have a rhyme, we don't have a reason. We're just gonna take us where the fiber gets us. So we're gonna start with our purple. And what I with what I grabbed, I have a lot of the purple. So that's awesome. We're gonna just grab that up and we're gonna load our hand carters. So one of the things you might notice if you've been watching my channel for a while is there's a lot of things where if you're a strict rule follower in Fiber Arts of like exactly how the book, by the book, how it says to do it, you'll notice that's not how I do a lot of things. And um, I think by the book, is it's wonderful. It might give you um, a particular result when you're doing something. A great example is don't, don't overload your hand carter. That's something I do all the time. But uh, for me, it just works. It gives me a yarn that I really, I don't, I don't mind at all. I like working with it. So a little confession, side note. Recently, I went to um, a local store that has a lot of acrylic yarn. And it has been years upon years since I uh, made anything with acrylic yarn. And I have been teaching my youngest daughter to crochet, um, youngest daughter in it, and another daughter to crochet. And so I'm very particular. I don't have uh, a lot of my own hand spun that's available for, um, for extraneous type products, projects like that. And so 
they picked out some acrylic, which is kind of like, it was a, it was a moment where it's like, okay, this is, this is not my highest point in life, but they picked out some acrylic yarn that they were going to learn with. And I was crocheting with it. And one of the interesting things is it had no, you know, I always say like acrylic yarn to me has no life. I put it in my hands. I feel it. And I think like there's, there's nothing to this that's speaking to me. You can use it. It's yarn, whatever it, it has this like, it's almost soft. It's trying to be soft, but it just doesn't quite convince your hands that it's truly soft. Especially if you've used Angora yarn, you know what real soft is. And uh, I had this bit of the yarn, it's actually still over there, but you could see where um, the yarn had broken and it was literally just tied. And I was so unused to that because I'm used to using hand spun yarn and I'm not used to all of a sudden in the yarn coming up to a spot where it literally was split in half and then tied back together. There was a big knot in the yarn. So it was very stunning, very stunning to see that because you know, when you spin your own yarn, when you do something like this, you can, the yarn doesn't break. And if it does, you simply join on more fiber. And so uh, you never have a knot in your yarn and never a spot where it's completely broken. So, uh, our first row leg, and we're just gonna keep going. We're, I think we're just gonna always start with the base of purple when I'm doing these row legs. We're gonna keep it the same. I have my purple on my right, my Angora in the middle, and then the bits and pieces of all the other colors to the left. So we're loading up a ton of, the, a ton of this purple on here, which these colors, in real life when you get this, if you get this fiber, it goes together very, very well. So if you remember the concept of time, I was talking about time. And I was thinking a lot about time recently. Maybe we'll get a bit heavy here, but I think I think you all will be able to follow me on this and let me know if it makes any sense to you what I'm about to say, okay? So the concept of time, and I, I do a lot of purposefully seeking out information, trying to learn about all sorts of different topics. One of the things I heard recently was time is the friend of a good business and it's the enemy of a bad business. And you know, of course, I had to stop and think about that and said, well, what does that mean? And do you think that, how, what do you mean? Like, how is that true? Could that be true? And This morning I was thinking about it with hand carding and with making yarn. And I thought, well, isn't that the truth? So when you take a skill like creating yarn and when you take a skill like hand carding, time is your friend. The more time you spend doing this, the better that you become at it, the more that you develop the, the memory, and so you can do something like this or you're not looking and still the, the fiber is going in a relatively okay way on, the, on your carter. You're not putting your fiber like on the wall or anything. But time is the friend of a fiber artist. Time is not the enemy, time is the friend. Because the more time you invest in this and the more time that you put forth in trying to take these skills, practice them over and over. You repeat that. Maybe you experiment with things. Maybe, you know, the rule is don't overload your hand carter, but maybe you decide, hey, I want to I want to do that. I want to see what it makes for yarn. And you realize it makes a yarn that I love spinning and the yarn itself has life to it. There's something about it where you feel it and you touch that yarn and you make that yarn and you know what I'm talking about if you've made your own yarn where it's very alive, it's very real. There's something that says this is a part of life. This is just absolutely something that it has a story, it has meaning, which is really a cool thing. But time is not, certainly not the enemy of a fiber artist. Then you think about crocheting and you think about the concept of time. So is time the enemy of somebody who is um, a, a crocheter? 
Well, maybe at first you may say, well, I always feel like I don't have enough time to crochet. I always have all these works in progress. In progress. I always have all these things, and it just doesn't seem like um, doesn't seem like I can do them the way I want to do them. But you know, it's it might be true that it feels that way, and it might be true that you really do have things that are preventing you from doing what you really would like to be doing some of the time or maybe even most of the time. But it does not negate the fact that when you do put the time in practicing your craft, your fiber arts craft, that that time is your friend. That investment of your time and that investment of your attention is your friend. So hopefully that does that make sense. Hopefully that that makes sense and what do you think about it? The interesting piece is whenever, whenever you put time into something, like uh, hand carding, for example, when you put time into this, if you were to stop and if you were to look back, have you ever felt like there was a time you were hand carding? And have you ever felt like, I just completely wasted my time? Or when you really stop and you really look back at it, there's always something to learn. There's always some experience to gain from it. And how many other parts of life can we say that about? So even if we create roll eggs that were like, I do not like that roll egg, it did not come out the way I wanted it to, even if you're hand carding and it is just not going, just not going the way that you, you thought it might go, well, you always learn something from it. There's always, when you stop and you look back from it, there's always some benefit to it, even when it doesn't go the way you don't want, that, that you wanted it to. If it doesn't go the way you wanted it to, there's still something for you to learn from it. There's still a benefit in there. You still have gained very valuable and precious knowledge about whatever it happens to be, whether it was how you loaded the hand carter or the fibers you use, the preparation of um, maybe those fibers. There's, there's always something. And looking at that process, where, where can you look at life and, and say, no matter, no matter what I do, um, it's always a benefit. There's always a benefit to it. Well, maybe you can. I mean, maybe if you apply that to your life, like the idea of even when you fail, you learn something, if you always have that idea of looking back at things. I'm doing most of these row legs twice, as you can see. That doesn't mean if you're doing this same fiber, that doesn't mean you have to do the same thing. But this is coming out and there's really, there's no naps in it. And if you don't know what naps are, naps are when the fiber that you're putting on the hand carter, the, the fibers, instead of going straight and being brushed straight through the teeth of the hand carter, they start getting tangled up on the teeth. And when you get those little tangles, we call them naps. And those naps can be for any normal, any, any, amount of reasons. There's a whole different reason, well, many different reasons why there's nips. It could be second cuts in there. It could be um, pieces of hay that are all jumbled up and getting debris stuck on them. Could be the fibers are breaking. It could be that you have hand carded the fibers so many times that they have now, instead of being uh, straight and parallel with each other, you've hand carded it so many times that they're beginning to uh, tangle amongst themselves and they're definitely fatigued through the process. All sorts of reasons. Sometimes it's matted fiber. So if you're trying to carve fiber that is that already is tangled, um, your hand carters can get through some webbing depending on the hand carters you use, but the ability of a hand carter to completely get through a big mat is not 
that's not what the tool is for and that's not really what it can do. You're pushing your tool to the limit and you will end up with bits of yarn and I'm sorry, bits of wool that are stuck together. Making nips. Now sometimes purposefully you can put in bits of things like little bits of cut up, um, maybe little bits of cut up yarn, little bits of cut up fibers that are in there. You want to actually have that sort of texture in your yarn. And um, sometimes you can design a yarn where you want that, that textured feeling, that lumpy feeling. So there's a time and a place for it. But just because you have nips, even if you accidentally have them, the truth is that doesn't mean the yarn that's going to be created when you spin it is useless at all. So a yarn that has texture, there's still value in it. There, it's still, there's still a place for it. And that's, that's also just another great thing about making yarn is how many times can you look at something else and say, even, again, even when, I, even when it doesn't come out the way I want it to, I can still use it. It's still a usable result. I really like this one. So this is the purple, a bit of Angora, and then also more of uh, purple that has some red in it. So that one's very nice. Recently, we have been working on a few different patterns, making and writing a few different patterns, crochet patterns. We finished up a new pattern for an octopus. So normally we do rabbits, which makes sense because we're rabbit training yarns and we raise Angora rabbits. So a lot of our patterns that we have available are crochet rabbit patterns. There's some available that are free if you go to rabbit training yarns, just completely free crochet uh, rabbit patterns, which I encourage you to check out, grab some free patterns, there's no cost. And we've been working on some different creatures. So they're, they're kind of, the way we envision it is like friends of the Angora rabbits. So the Angora rabbits are definitely friends with each other and the crochet rabbits are definitely friends with each other, but they, they do not have a lot of diversity of creatures. It's just been really a rabbit world. And so we developed an octopi pattern. So when I crochet, when I look for patterns, there's a couple of different criteria that I think of. And I'll try, if I try a pattern out, maybe I found it on Pinterest, maybe I found it on Ravelry, and I'll try the pattern out. And I'm looking for a few different things. So is this pattern easy to follow? Is it quickly, to, can I follow it quickly? Um, I like to use the same pattern over and over. And so is this a pattern that I can memorize and just do from memory over and over and over again? There's something satisfying to me when it's, um, there's, not, there's not a heavy burden of thought when I'm creating a project. Sometimes you just need those, what can be called mindless, uh, mindless projects where there's not, you don't have to think intensely about them. You don't have to monitor every single row, every single stitch, every single round, whatever it is of what you're making. Um, especially sometimes when, if days get pretty, days get pretty stressful. So uh, I look at patterns and, you know, they have to, they have to have that criteria of ease of use. I don't, I can do patterns that are more fiddly and there's a time and a place for it, but there is also a joy in patterns that, again, you can memorize and you can do and there's a, there's a quiet and there's a peace to them. And so this, when I was looking and trying to figure out and find a good octopus pattern, I couldn't, I could not find one that was meeting my criteria. The other thing is it has to be a pattern that can be produced um, quickly. So when you think about if you have a business and, and it's a crochet business or a fiber arts business, 
when you have something like that, to be able to, your time is, your time is very valuable. And to be able to create fun little creatures like, a, like an octopus, um, you're really looking at, you don't want to spend days or weeks creating something that you're then going to sell for a lower price point because your time is then not well spent from a financial point of view, if it's a business. If it's, if it's not, if you're just doing it for fun, then it, it's up to you, then who, you know, almost who cares. But if you're doing it for a business, that's part of the criteria of a pattern that I need to have, is this pattern has to be something that I can execute pretty fast. And, um, and so that's, that's what we did, is we ended up just not being satisfied, surprise, surprise, and made our own octopus pattern. So we are still working on, I'm still working on taking the pictures, all the pictures of um, creating the pattern, typing it all up, putting it all together into a downloadable PDF. But one of the things we are going to do with that pattern is before we even get it all, all those pictures and all that stuff, just for the fun of it. So any of the members of the channel who are on here, we'll do a little crochet along and we can each, we can sit around, chit chat, crochet, some octopi together. And you guys, you can get that pattern right away. Which is just one of the perks of being a member. I would have to say, we are probably well over done with the first ounce of this. And again, normally it's three ounces, but I only grabbed two of the ounces today of this, just to hand card up. Everything is pretty balanced. I don't have any row legs that are just wool. I don't have any that are just in guard. This is going to be a super, super loaded hand cutter. You may notice if you've been watching some of these videos and if you take a look at this video, this hand cutter is not a curved hand cutter. It's a flat hand cutter. And the tool that I use, this is a Howard hand cutter. And um, you can definitely get bigger hand carters. You can get curved hand carters. There's different brands of hand carters, but I prefer uh, the same old, very fine Howard hand carter that I've had. I don't know how long I've had these, <laughs> but I've had these for a while. I just noticed one get, one's getting a little wobbly. You can see there's wear after years upon years of use, but Nothing is breaking, nothing is coming apart. I like that in a tool. I like a tool that you can buy it once and you can really use it. And you don't have to be, you don't have to coddle it. You don't have to be super gentle with this tool. This is a tool that you're gonna take it and you're gonna use this tool. I don't particularly, I don't particularly care for tools where you have to be so cautious and gentle with them that that you really kind of unbalance the whole thing and or possibly break it. To me, it's like, it doesn't fit. But when you use a lot of fine fibers like Angora, like Merino, wool, you know, these hand carters, they stand up to what you're asking them to do quite well. I'm not actually gonna put any other fiber in this one, just Angora and just the purple. because I loaded it so much. I often, I have a second cut. Let's see, can you see it? Right there. That's a pretty big second cut. Sometimes I'll just leave the second cuts in and um, take them out when I'm spinning or they'll just you know, kind of fall out easily on their own. That one was not going to fall out. It was, it was a bit large. And there's a second half of it that I'll take out as well. It's quite staticky in here. And then I see one grass seed. So we do feed our 
Angora rabbits, we put them in hay. And it's just been, it's just made for healthier rabbits. It does make for hay in the in their wool. It just does. It makes for hay in their coats. And that's okay because I would rather have a few bits of wool that I pick out here and there than um, ill rabbits or rabbits that have rabbits that have some sort of health issues, some sort of health concern. Always, that's just something that we we always they always have fresh hay. They always just have fresh hay. It's not where we live, the, the hay is not super expensive that we can get. Um, I know that there are places where hay is quite expensive and that has to be, the use of hay has to be more monitored. And I wish that wasn't the case because hay is really a great thing for rabbits. You know, they can sit and they can chew it up and do their little, their little rabbit thing. They enjoy it. Rabbits love chewing. It's something that they spend a large part of their day chewing things, eating things. The fiber of hay is very good. Sometimes the hay we feed is alfalfa. And a lot of people shy away from alfalfa for their rabbits because of some of the, the nutrient contents in alfalfa. Well, as with everything with raising rabbits, it's, it'd be nice if there was some just very clear, very clear response you could give someone, such as, no, don't feed them alpha, alpha ever, or yes, you can feed them alpha, alpha. However, that's, that's not really the case because there's a lot of different things that go into it. The, the actual hay. So like alfalfa is not the same depending on if it's a first cut, a, a second cut, a third cut, depending on the field in which it was grown, um, what sort of alfalfa seed is being used. Is this pure alfalfa or is it actually a field where we call it alfalfa, but there's actually other plants growing in it and it's quite a mix of, of other things in there. So for somebody just starting out with Angora, I would say Yes, you can feed your rabbit alfalfa hay. If that's all you have, great. Just don't feed them a ton. Um, and be careful of, be careful of, um, you know, the actual amount that you're feeding. So part of it is there can be a lot of calcium in some hays, in some alfalfas. And this, Rabbits are, you know, with their digestive system, and it's really with anything. It's all in, you have to have it in moderation. It's just like with rabbit pellets. The ideal for food is, yes, you could feed your rabbit an entire diet of, you could feed your rabbit an entire diet of rabbit pellets. If that's all you have, your rabbits can exist off pellets. They certainly can but they might not be as healthy as they could be. Um, they might end up, you know, you might end up with some tricky situations. Maybe you won't, but there's a lot of factors that truly go into feed when you think about it, which this is, and now I'm off topic and now we're talking about rabbit food. So let's get back to our hand carding. I've used up all my Angora and I only have a little bit of purple and three separate little colors here that I can use. So we're almost done with the two ounces with the hand cutting. This is a very vibrant purple that I just put on. And I'm going to put on, this is kind of a peachy orange. I like it. I'm going to mix it right in there. I think some of the last roll eggs are actually going to be just purple roll eggs. So it'll be an interesting mix. There's a couple of different ways I can actually spin this yarn. So when I come, when it comes to spinning, I could spin it into a single if I wanted. So I, I have to decide, do I want to, do I want to spin this into a traditional yarn or do I want to spin this into an art yarn? And then I have to decide, okay, if I want to spin this into a traditional yarn, 
which I do, even though this would make a very beautiful art yarn. If I wanted to spin this into a traditional yarn, then how many ply do I want this to be? So you have a lot of different options. With only these two ounces, um, I rarely spin singles because what I've been using the Ashford Elizabeth spinning wheel and I spin my yarn quite, quite fine, quite thin. And I enjoy that just because I use, uh, I use a lot of thinner yarns. You can always, the thing about spinning yarn is you can always spin the yarn thin and then ply multiple strands together or hold multiple strands of yarn to make it thicker. But if you take a yarn and if you spin it thick to begin with, how do you, how do you spin that thinner? And, and that's something where you, you really have a difficult time trying to spin something thinner that's already thick, especially if you've washed it, if you've set the twist. It's, you're asking for such an incredibly fiddly, possibly impossible process. So well that's, that's kind of the theory also, is that you can always ply something up. You can always hold multiple strands together for a thin yarn but it's, it's not, you can't do it in the opposite for a thick yarn. You can't take yarn that's quite thick and then um, splice it and turn it into uh, a thin yarn easily. So if you think about it, when you think about when you're creating yarn, um, that's just something that I think of. It's, but it all depends on what you're gonna do with your yarn. Again, it's like if it's if you know it's gonna be an art yarn, then perfect. You know, there's there's no question about um, you know you don't have the same questions as, as that. I think it's gonna be two more roll eggs. That's it. And then this will all be carded. We have, we have been having quite a situation with the weather here. So it has been very unseasonably warm this winter to the degree that um, two days ago, the weather was approaching the 60s. And then last night, it was very cold. And for our animals, that's very difficult for managing. There's a lot of things to consider. Let's say you have a spread of 40 degrees for temperature between less than a 24 hour period. That's very difficult for an animal to acclimatize to. So besides hand carding and making the yarn, we've been We've been really working hard at managing the sheep and managing the rabbits. The reason it matters for the sheep is because they have their, their fully wooled coats um, almost a year of growth. So this is the year that instead of shearing them twice, their coats, we left their, we left their wool on. For the winter, because if it was a typical winter, that would be okay, but this is not a typical winter. This is a very abnormally warm winter, and it is certainly something that we very much monitor. I think, obviously, we're not the only part of the United States that has that issue. But this is our last rolling. This is it. Thanks for sitting with me, chatting with me, all that good stuff. And we hope that you enjoy whichever project that you are working on. We are done. And we are ready to go about the rest of our day. So I definitely hope that you have an excellent day. No matter how warm or not warm or whatever the weather is for you. Bye.